right, uh, welcome to RG TV. I'm here today with President of Education and Welfare at Robert Gordon University, Emmanuel Akirele. Is that correct? Yes, yes, very correct. Pleasure to be and, here. Yeah, nice to meet you. I really appreciate your time for uh, deciding to speak with RG TV. We really appreciate your time. Oh, no worries. <laughs> today we'll be discussing Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, quite interesting though discussing we earlier on spoke with them because the black man um the mp for Aberdeen not and uh we had a quite interesting time and discussion with her so it's your turn to have a quite interesting uh, discussion with you and uh, once again thank you for joining us it's a pleasure to be here <laughs> pleasure to be on your heart seat <laughs> it won't be odd set because it won't be odd set because um, I I know I know it, it, it's a it's a it's a discussion you can't really relate to and uh, it's a discussion I'm sure you're passionate about. So first of all, I want to know um, looking at the issue that is happening globally, which um, there's some um, Black Life Matters, police brutality against them. Um, people with color, especially the black people, especially in the U.S. Um, on Saturday, we had a protest in Aberdeen. I, I want to mm -hmm. know your view, your view about everything generally, about what's going on over there in the world, the police brutality, the protests and everything. It's my, my view is very, very straightforward. Um, racism is, is a, a pandemic. It's it's a global pandemic. It's been there for ages. Um, it's been there before I was born. It's my my father and my father's father. Um, they experienced these things. You know, people from their era experienced these things. These struggles are not started today. This cries of pain. This cries of injustice. This cries of inequality has not. It didn't start today. It's been for it's been on and on and on and it's it's a shame really um that um it, this it could be happening in this day and time that you know we could be facing or experiencing this sort of issues um experiencing racism you know in its rawest form at this point in time it shouldn't be happening it's 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 unexplainable um and there's no way I can understand it, and it's a real shame, but what's important is to ensure that, you know, things like this shouldn't continue to exist, because it has no place in the human society, it has no place, it shouldn't exist in any shape or form, you know, so it's, it's, I totally condemn it, I, I am totally against it, I totally stand against racism, stand against inequality, you know, life in itself should be as simple and easygoing, filled with love as it should be. Quite interesting, quite interesting. Uh, you've been living in Scotland for, for, for some time now, and uh, what would you say is, uh, what would you say is the act of racism in Scotland is as compared to other, other parts of the world? Well, <laughs> I haven't been, I haven't traveled around so much. Uh, um, and I mean, I've only lived in Scotland for a very short time. But in the period I've been here, I've experienced a lot of um, good stuff, a lot of amazing people. Um, you know, I met really, really good people from all different walks of life, all different races, you know, and It'll be a real, it'll be a real shame, really, um, to allow that that much fantastic experience to be dented by the idiocy of um, a certain few, you know. Because I I call it complete idiocy. It's it's absolute idiocy. You don't go around treating people like they're rubbish, you know. Um, of course, <laughs> I believe. Uh, not not just about me believing it's it's a reality come let's just let's there's no need debating about these things it's the reality of things yeah it exists everywhere 
he exists here, he exists as much in the, U- the whole of the UK, he exists in America, you know, he exists in different forms and different shapes, but it is still racism, you know, maybe not violent or as violent as the, U- the US, for example, maybe there's no guns, maybe there's no kneeling on somebody's neck, you know, um, in the physical form of it, but there is still that those you know microaggressions or um systemic racism institutional racism that still exists in the uk you know it, in a place like scotland it's a shame to say it. it's definitely a shame but it's the reality but we have to come to terms with it it's, it is you know so the first step to solving a problem or solving an issue is admitting first of all that it does exist so yeah yes it, it is there it, i would be a complete idiot if i uh, a complete idiot if i came back came to you and said look no it's not yet in the uk or it's not yet in scotland oh come on you know, as a student leader especially a president of uh, education and welfare have, have any students of black color ever approached you or complained to you about um any act of racism against him or her? Um, I obviously I can't I can't necessarily just say that for for example because you know um, I wouldn't be expressing that much in a public platform because most of the things are being said are, are said in confidentiality, you know. But there has been people shared experiences and they still keep sharing experiences to this day you know to this to this very day which shows you that it's there it's it's simply there you know it's it's happening between even in daily lives you know <laughs> even on like if it could happen on the, on the streets of of, yeah. of of Aberdeen then like it could happen anywhere it could happen in different organizations it could happen even in different workplace or you know study place between colleagues between friends you know so these things are definitely there so uh, what influence would you say um this um, current situation about racism has on the black students and for example regarding university or any other university in scotland or elsewhere I would say a lot. It does have a lot, you know. Um, I'm a part of this group called uh, it's um, Equality Group of um, student elected officers um, or any volunteer students that want to be a part of it. And you see, every time there's a lot of work that goes um, into that group, which you know is being used, is being um, organized through the NUS, which is the National Union of Students, um, the Scotland chapter. And there's a lot of work and conversations that go into that, a lot of experiences that are being shared by individuals, a lot of reported in, in experiences, you know. So, there, but then there is a lot of um, work that you see or you get to see online. And these are like lots of, some of the back, the guys that work in the back end. Um, but I will tell you for a fact, it's, it's definitely been instrumental, historic, you know, it's, it's, it's created an opportunity for people to have a voice, you know, it's created an opportunity for people to speak up um, and be able to, to, to talk about these things openly, you know, without the fear of being judged or being punished unjustly just for sharing their experiences, you know. Um, so um, it's, 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 it's come with so much negativity, but at the same time, it's bred a lot of positivity, you know, if you get what I mean. So. Um, it's a negative situation that has given, given rise or given birth to a lot of uh, positive outcomes and the positive outcomes is what you see around the world today, you know, like people kicking back, people protesting, people going on pe- peaceful protests, you know, going on walks, raising placards, raising their voices, 
because if you if you look really beneath people coming out especially during this kind of a time to um, make such moves you can sense a lot of pain and a lot of um, yeah. frustrations True. in in those actions that people have like just kept or beat down into themselves and they've just seen an opportunity to just cry out not for anything um not 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 for you know for confrontation or anything this piece of people who just want they simply are just wanting equality they want to be seen as equals they want to be treated as human beings first and yeah. um, they don't want you to see them as just a color or allow the color of their skin be a factor you know in anything that they're doing so it's just a cry for fairness for respect you know for for inclusivity not not just and like these are not just mere words these are actually feelings these are what people want and there is absolutely nothing wrong with asking for respect there's yeah. nothing wrong with asking for equality or being seen as an equal or being treated equal you know so and that's quite interesting answer. Um, do you feel that this um, current protest that um, is going on with the number of white people um, being involved, with the number of um, other races being involved, with the number of um, countries showing interest and all those things, do you think, um, do you feel that um, this protest will lead to a change? It's, it's, it's not the answer. Um, don't get me wrong. It's a step. It's a fantastic step in the right direction. Um, but it's not the answer. It's not the. It's it's not the destination. It's a, it's a journey. Yeah. And I am so glad at the awakening. I call it an awakening because it's awakening a lot of people, and um, it's not just people of color or black people, but you know everyone in the community. As you can see, there's a lot of allies everywhere, different countries, different colors, different languages. People are speaking out, people are speaking out, people are saying something, people are expressing themselves. Yeah. And it just shows you the power or the extent to which racism has eaten deep into the society, into the human society in the world. You know, because it's not just this started from something that an incident that happened in america moved yeah. all around america moved all yeah. around starting to go around europe you know people in africa are speaking up people in, Aus in australia are speaking up people in, in the americas are speaking up so in asia are speaking up so that that shows you that this is real yeah you know this is real and like the extent to which it has gone it's it's an awakening, but it's not the answer. It's a step in. It's a step in the right direction. Okay. So, what what are the things? What are the things or the changes you think we should be looking forward to? To know that uh, this protest is indeed making an impact, or people are getting to hear um, the cry of this protest. What are some of the changes you think we should look out for? There is, there, there's loads, um, it's a lot, but it's not something one man or one person or one group or yeah. one race can achieve alone. Um, <clears throat> there is a lot of, there is a lot of work to be done. Um, and what I would say is, as much as people are raising their voices and making and creating awareness within each and every social group, within each and every group, within each and every organization, we need to be intentional. Okay. We need to be take to take action and be intentional with this change. That's okay. why, and be able, you don't need to, as an individual, want to change the whole world. You can't, yeah. you know, but you can start by making, um, um, a, a, starting a process within your own immediate environment. That's why, um, following everything going on, we've started um, to take action. Even you know, not we've started to take more action rather, because there's been a lot of work that has been done in the past. You know, um, yeah. 
to, to, to demonstrate inclusivity, diversity um, within, the, within the, 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 the RGU community, within RGU union, but then it's doing more. That's what's important, you know. So um, now, you know, it's all about creating a platform where people feel more comfortable or safe, a safe space to share lived experiences or where we can create a platform where things or issues like this shouldn't just go under the carpet. It's not about being, getting someone to be punished. It's about allowing people to learn because some people genuinely don't know when they make these um, comments or when they say things that are quite offensive. So it's about learning, creating an opportunity for people to learn about other people's cultures, to learn about other people's um, way of life, to learn about why people do the things that they do, to be more tolerant, to be more fair, to create an equal opportunity, a ground for equal opportunities for everyone. You know, so um, it's not something that's going to um, be achieved in a day, in a month, in a week, in a year. There's loads of work that needs to be done. But um, what I would encourage anyone that's probably going to be listening to me as I speak is let the change start from you, regardless of who you are, um, be you, regardless of your color, regardless of your status, regardless of whatever you do. Let love lead you. Because this struggle, this fight is not against racism. It's not white against black. Yeah. It's people against racism because everybody is equal, you know? Um, organizations, businesses, corporations, firms need to start including this as part of their culture, you know? Um, creating a, an equal opportunity, equal platform for everyone. And that's, that's what's most important. For, our, for example, within RGU, um, <clears throat> we're looking forward to how do we deliver the Black History Month coming up in October. And that's what we're working on seriously at the moment because campaigns like that is what we use to raise awareness, is what we use to learn from each other with love, you know, because this fight is something that can only, only be solved um, with love, in honesty, you know, because we're all equal, we're all the same. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was, I was, I was saying to someone that um, actually um, this COVID nineteen has made us realize that we are equal because anyone, irrespective of your skin color, you expose yourself to the disease, you get the virus. So actually, it has really shown that we are we are equal. And I was also saying that uh, though when when people when for instance the protests we had on Saturday in uh, in Aberdeen, you could see that they were also another group of people that are anti against what you are doing that's against what we are trying to say to the people the love we are trying to preach there are another group of people that are preaching hate against it so i i'm i'm, I'm saying that when people show you hate show them love because you understand it yeah so i i want to get your view i want to get your view of what do you have to say to people that think that oh black all life matters blah yeah blah blah we know all life matters but what do you have to say to people that feel like this protest or this movement is not necessary i've been seeing a lot of analogies online and honestly they all make sense you can't be in the house in the street and then the house is burning and yeah. then you say well all the how all the other houses matter but they're not burning at the moment are they you know so all of the analogies I've seen, I can make loads and loads of examples. Um, you could be playing football and hit your foot, you know, on the on the on the ground and like it's bleeding, and yeah. you know you're about to give care to your or someone the nurse is about to give care to your foot. It doesn't mean that your arm doesn't matter or your head doesn't matter, but your head is not hurting, your hand is not, hurting, but your foot is. Yeah. You know? Um, there's loads of analogies I can give, but what, what I would say is a lot of these people are either misinformed or just completely ignorant, you know, and there's a lot of learning that needs to be done. There's a lot of learning. When you look at, look at it this way, I ask myself a lot of questions 
every time and I ask myself one of one of the questions I ask myself is why would I leave my home country yeah. you know and come study somewhere abroad where I've got no family no dad no mom no sister no brother nothing my food the kind of food that I love to eat is, is quite scarce and very expensive yeah. the kind of music I like to listen to is very very scarce the yeah. kinds of things I love to do I'm not here the weather is not exactly it's not completely bad, but it's not the way that I'm used to. So there's a lot of different things. So why would I leave somewhere? And I, I, ne- I honestly, I never even wanted to come to the UK in the first place. I keep saying it every time. But I came and I, I love it. You know, I love yeah. the place. I love the people because there's a lot of good people here. Yeah. And it brings me back to what my mom told me. She said, look, go, go and experience um, the world, experience people experience cultures that's how you learn that's why i'll use this opportunity and this platform to say two things to two different kinds of people if you're from africa if you're from anywhere or you're you're a person of color look for where you're from look for where your origin is learn about it go there visit it always go home never forget the road that leads you home and be completely proud of it every friday i'm a nigerian every friday i put on my native heart my cultural heart, my Yoruba heart, I put it on, or my Igbo heart, I put it on, and I very proudly around campus, around the city, I'm proud of it, I'm proud of who I am, it's my identity, and it's where I'm from, you know, and the second thing I'm going to say to other, to the other people, or, or the other set of people is, if you've never, regardless of where you're from, you might be from the UK, you might be from America, Canada, Australia, wherever you are from, regardless of the color of your skin, you know, regardless of what kind of race you are, you have, if you've never been somewhere, if you want, you want to learn about that place or those people or their culture or their way of life, go there. Don't just sit in your homes and on your couch and look at your phone or whatever you see on the TV and think, oh, that is exactly what it is. No, it's not. Yeah. You know, I could have had, I've ha- I used to have my own perceptions of what the UK looked like. And then I came here and I know what it is firsthand. I know what the culture is, you know. So educate yourselves. That's what's most important. Learn and relearn. There's no, there's, there's nothing wrong. There's no difference between human beings, regardless of your size, your shape, or your color. You know, it, but people have to learn. People have to learn. And then the opportunity for people to, be, to learn must be created you know so it's i don't know if there's any better way that i can say it, but honestly it's and, and as you may know I'm, I'm always fired up about this kind of stuff i'm yeah um i i'm very passionate about equality and I, what i mean by equality i mean equality in all shape and in all form no need to discriminate anybody against anybody show respect at all times to every kind of human being we are all the same, you know, show respect, show love, be fair, create equal opportunities for everyone. That's what, that's just all I'm about. Wow. That's, a, that's really deep. That's really insightful. Um, this, this might be a bit personal, but I just want to know how being a black person in Robert Gordy University, and um, are you able to attain this height, getting becoming a president in the education world. Of course, you were elected for. It wasn't by appointment. You were elected for. That means majority of students voted for you, in which I would say majority of students in RGU are white. That yeah. I don't have any records to that, but but of course. So I was. How, how, how did you do it? How did you get to that point? Well, I think uh, it's also important to reiterate that, like, like I said before, change starts from you. You know, um, I don't see color. Um, first of all, I see all. I see humans. I see we're yeah. all the same. Yeah. You know? um, it's easy for a person to say, "Look, um, student union elections is based on popularity and all that." But sometimes it's popularity. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you know whichever it is, but I just took courage. Um, I didn't really face, 
you know, any discrimination in that process. I'll just reiterate because that was an equal, an equal opportunity to be to come into the role was created. I saw an opportunity to be president to, um, and I probably had an idea of a change that I wanted to see within the university. And that was what motivated me to run for the role that I did, you know. Um, and I just put in, I, I got people to um, sign for me and say, look, I nominate this person for this role. I put in my form and then just spoke to ask people to vote for me, vote with my manifesto. And I, <laughs> I guess people just thought it made sense, maybe, yeah. you know, uh, and um, I, I, every, I, I'm not, it's very difficult to be able to gauge, but I hope I'm not letting people down up until this very moment, but I keep trying my best anyway. Um, yeah, so no, no, I didn't have any, any reason or any discrimination against me for any reason. It, it was just an equal opportunity that was, that was open and I just tried, you know, I just, tried without looking back plus i i wanted i i had an experience a personal experience in uni uh where i wanted to use the library during uh one time when i was writing my dissertation you know and then i it's a dissertation no it was a coursework and then i couldn't i couldn't use the library simply because um because the library wasn't open 24 7 at the time okay so I, I felt disadvantaged and then when i came into my role one of the first things i wanted to do was create an opportunity for students who might want to use that facility to be able to use it at any time so currently before the pandemic happened um while working in partnership with the university we we're able to create a space in the year wood building where all year round outside of exams, you know, there's a 24 seven study space available. So that was my motivation, happy to have achieved it, but um, not taking away the light from the fact that it was an equal opportunity that I saw and I went for it. And, you know, that it wasn't like, I felt like, oh, I know all the people in RGU at the time. No, no. <laughs> I probably thought nobody even knew me. I didn't think I was going to get more than one book. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Honestly, I I must uh, commend your efforts because I I feel that you are an inspiration to so many. Although you don't see any color, but trust me, there are some people out there that see color. You're an inspiration to so many black people that want to aspire to get to higher position, not just in RGU but in other in other universities or in other bigger platforms. Because it's a, if if someone with my skin color can do it, then I can also do it. So I'm, I'm almost really commend you for taking that steps. It's, it's, it's a big it's a step, seriously. It's a big step. So thank, uh, thank, you, thank you very much. For that. Those are really kind words, but um, just to put it out there, I'm not the first or second or third uh, first or black president of RGU Union. You know, there's been loads. There was Michael Ife before me. There was okay. um, Francisca Chiedo before that. There was still, you know, one or two other people in between there as well. So um, the inspiration has always been there. So <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy that I can be an inspiration to someone. I never thought it would be. <laughs> oh, you are. You, you are. Trust me, you are. Yeah. So that, that, that's to say that RGU itself has been a school that gives equal opportunity to everyone everybody irrespective of their background irrespective of where they are coming from aside the school giving admission platforms to students from all over the world the student also under, they understand the, the 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 concept of diversity by voting for people from different background irrespective of where they are coming from because in in other places well according to some testimony i've heard in other schools out in other parts of England, they they they, they only vote for for people they, they think oh you you are from here you know the situation better than someone coming from another place to come and lead us, you know that based on testimony I've heard this I I don't I wouldn't like to mention any school's name but these are testimony I've heard from England so I I, I think I urge you to is 
I think we should commend their effort and, and that that's basically make it obvious that Aberdeen is, is a place for people with diverse backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Um if you look if you if you all you need to do sometimes is just take a walk from the Sai and Wood building through ABS. Um and you would it's so clear, it's crystal clear like the amount of diversity we have on the campus and how much it is celebrated and not just by the university, by the union, you know. Um yeah. we have Black History Month, we have one RG many nations, there's a lot of the Chinese New Year, you know, there's a lot of diversity, so many student society groups, um, the Nigerian society, the Ghanaian society, Afro-Caribbean society, and all the other societies. Um, we are currently creating um, a black minority um, network. Okay. Um, um, we're in the, in the process of creating that at the moment, and I'm going to use this opportunity to call, you know, out uh, members of the black community in RGU, you know, to both staff, students, and even alumni as well to, you know, be a member of that community, share your experiences and be there for each other. Um, but yeah, the, the, the university community is very, very um, healthy in diversity, celebrates inclusivity and respect and equality as a culture. Um, just a few, I think a couple of weeks ago, we had the Student Partnership Agreement 2020. The Student Partnership Agreement is one that's done every year. Okay. So the one for this year, 2020, even before any of all of this started happening was we agreed, which is um, a working relationship between staff and students towards the student learning experience. So the agreement was um, understanding the expectations surrounding equality, tolerance and respect, you know. And um, so myself and the two other presidents, Ursula Ojiji and Kieran, both yeah. did um, a series of conversations just like myself and you, yeah. with different members of staff on a platform we call Chat Common Change. So where we had this discussion around understanding what equality means to people, what respect meant to people, what tolerance meant to people, and inculcating those things into those values into the, the, the entire value of RGU as a community. So yes, very, 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 very much um, celebrated is diversity within RGU. Okay. So uh, what, what do you have to say to, um, to RGU students that are, that are involved with um, any um, racial discrimination or any ways to encourage to, to encourage every uh, every black uh, community member especially those from RGU this is I think my message would not be going to just the black community to be honest it's going okay. to all of uh, every member of RGU community okay um, every member of the Aberdeen as a host society host community for all of us is look we are all the same this life you know this journey this struggle you just have to win it with love you know we're all equals but the same regardless of white or black or whatever color you know and if if you have been involved in the process fantastic kudos to you because it's it takes a lot to come out and speak out about these things because these are very personal things to people. These are pains and, you know, issues, you know, kudos. Don't stop. Don't stop speaking out. Keep speaking out. Keep, keep sharing your experiences. Keep forming one whole community and don't forget to engage. You know, there's already existing platforms. There's more platforms being created, not just, you know, here but everywhere and make sure you use those platforms or even your own personal platforms even on social media to air your views and raise your voices and continue to preach love continue to preach oneness continue to preach equality continue to preach respect and fairness forget any other any any um obstacles or anyone that is against what you're preaching 
you know, they'll come around, they will learn at some point. Look, change is constant and they can't stop it. Regardless yeah. of whatever anyone wants to say, change is constant, you know, and the protest that happened the other day in Aberdeen, historic, historic. Yeah. It, it yeah. marks, it, it stands for something and it stood for, and it continues and it would, it would always be there, 13th, the 13th of June, Saturday, yeah. it, will, it will never be forgotten, you know. Absolutely. So, just my that's my message to anyone that's been involved in the process and for a lot of the other people out there you know keeping quiet my message to you is it's not enough you know to you you, you you're saying no i'm not racist or i I'd rather not comment no i'm not racist but this 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 i don't i, I just want to be in the background but guess what it's not enough it's definitely not enough to be non-racist yeah. You have to be actively, consciously anti-racist. Because racism as it is shouldn't exist anywhere. Shouldn't exist in any human society. And yeah. regardless of whichever way, for the person I am and for what I stand for, I would condemn racism of any form, of any shape, be it microaggressions, systemic racism, institutional racism, violent racism, regardless of whichever form or shape it is, every day, every time, every day of the week, I will stand against that. Equality should be and must be the value, must be the standard everywhere. It's just as it, as it should be, you know? So I don't know if there's any better way that I can say it, but that, that is my message. That is what I'm preaching. Thank you so much, Imano, for adding your voice to this Black Lives Matters. And your words are so insightful and they are so encouraging to every member involved in this um, fight against um, racism.